Hey guys, in today's video I'm going to be showing you how to make this electric longboard. This is one of my favourite projects that I've ever made so far, just because it's so fun to ride. In last week's tutorial I showed you how to make the longboard deck and the longboard itself, which works really well as a normal longboard, but it's really annoying having to push and it's much more fun when you attach an electric motor to it. This electric skateboard is built almost entirely with parts just from Hobby RC cars, and I bought most of them off Hobby King. Its maximum speed is about 25 km an hour even while going uphill and its maximum range is roughly about 10 km. These two facts are going to be improved on massively as I've got some really good upgrades coming in the future. In today's tutorial I'm going to be showing you how I made the mechanical side of it and getting the motor mounted to the wheels and the belt attached and all of those things. Then in next week's tutorial I'm going to be showing you how I did all of the electronics. So now let's talk parts and the very first thing you're going to need is obviously a longboard. This can also be done with a skateboard or even a small penny board, but the reasons why I've used a longboard for this is since they were made for high speeds and they're much more comfortable going at high speeds since they're much more stable. So a longboard is what I'll be using. I made this longboard in last week's tutorial and if you want to check that out the link will be in the description down below. So once you've got a deck you're then going to need a motor and I'm going to be using a brushless DC outrunner motor. This motor was bought off Hobby King and all of the links to all of the parts will be in the description down below. These motors are very powerful and very compact, and this motor is almost 3000 watts when it's at its max amperage. To save space, the magnets of the motor are actually housed on the outside of the casing, and the outside casing actually spins along with the motor, which I think is really cool. This motor is actually meant for hobby RC cars, but it's got so much power you can use it on an electric skateboard. Different riders with different weights and different speeds will want to have different types of motors, and you see that each motor has a KV rating. This motor's got a 192 KV rating, and the KV rating is actually the amount of rotations per volt, so a higher KV rated motor will have more rotations per voltage that's put into it than a lower KV motor, but then a lower KV motor will have more torque, so you'll be able to go faster with a higher rated motor, but you won't be able to accelerate as fast or go up as steep hills. To transfer the torque from the motor to the wheel, I'm going to be using some HTD belt which is made for CNC machines and some pulleys. This is actually what the booster boards and many other electric skateboards use but I wouldn't really recommend it because if you don't get it tight enough sometimes it slips and in the future I'm going to be trying to upgrade this to using a bicycle chain and sprockets and something like that because already using this board I've gone through about three belts and they're quite expensive. The drive pulley and the pulley on the wheel have a ratio, so the motor has a 3 to 1 mechanical advantage, so the motor will spin 3 times for every 1 rotation of the wheel, which means that I have more torque. You can change this around depending on your weight and depending on the power of your motor, so then you can create a smaller drive wheel or a larger drive wheel to obtain different speeds and different torques. So there are quite a lot of different factors that you're going to have to change to get the perfect drive chain, and mine's definitely not perfect at the moment, but I'll link all of the parts that I have in the description down below if you want to copy it. The idea is that this larger pulley will go on the edge of the wheel and then it will be able to transfer all of the torque onto the wheel and spin. So the first thing that I need to do is actually mount the cog to the wheel. Conveniently it already came with an 8mm hole straight down the middle so I could put an M8 bolt through my wheel, through the bearings in the wheel and through the hole in the middle to make sure it's completely centred then I can tighten it down. I can then see that as I roll it about, it's completely centered in the middle of the wheel, and that's quite important because if it's off center, then it will cause the belt to wear very quickly as it stretches and relaxes it. I then took the pulley off the wheel and drilled three different holes through the wheel. Sometimes you'll get spoked wheels, like some of the orangutan wheels, which have spokes in that you can actually just put a bolt straight through, but this wheel didn't have any holes, so I had to drill through it with a drill press. This is a 6mm hole, which is going to accept an M6 bolt. As you can see this pulley has a weird step in it and my drill holes are going to be halfway on and halfway on this step so I rotate the pulley and drill through from the other side to mark holes. I can then take the pulley off the wheel and as you can see it's got three different holes marked on it to drill. I then clamp it in my drill press and drill all the way through. You can see once the drill bit gets down to the thinner step of the metal it's doing an interrupted cut and you've got to be really careful to not push the drill bit too far because otherwise it'll snap it. It's being guided by the hole that is above and you couldn't drill in from the other side. After I'd carefully drilled all three holes the wheel could then be assembled with bolts and washers and I could check that it would work. It seems to look like it's going to work nicely but one of the problems is the 8mm hole in the middle of the pulley is nowhere near big enough to fit over the trucks of my skateboard so I'm going to have to enlarge it. I did this using my metal lathe and a 20mm drill bit, you could also do it in a drill press. Unfortunately my camera decided to stop recording just as I was about to drill it which is kind of annoying because it looked really cool. 
Once I drilled out the pulley, I could then attach it onto the truck and the wheel spins freely and it looks like it's going to work very well. I designed my motor mount in a couple of minutes and it basically just uses a simple clamp that you clamp on using bolts that goes around the truck and this will be different for every different types of trucks that you're using and if you're using the same trucks you can just copy my design off the screen and if you're using a different truck you might have to figure out a different way of mounting the motor. I wanted to design my mount so that you could adjust the distance between the motor and the wheel so that you can get the right belt tension. For making the actual mount itself I'm just going to be using some 12mm thick aluminium plate. I just bought this off eBay and it's really cheap, you can pretty much buy it anywhere, it cost me only £10 and you could probably get it even cheaper. So my clamp design comes in two main different parts and firstly I glued on the clamping part. I centre punched the hole in the middle and started to drill it out, first with a smaller drill bit and then with my larger 20mm drill bit. For the rest of the cutting out I then used a hacksaw. If you had a band saw or some other type of saw that can cut through aluminium you could also use that. You could also use a jigsaw and I was thinking about using my CNC machine but then it would have taken quite a long time and also I thought if for a tutorial like this it's quite annoying if I just use a tool that no one else has. After I've roughly cut out each piece with the hacksaw I then finish it off by using rasps and files. These bring it close up to the lines and make it the right shape. There are two slots that need to be cut out on this main section and I just drilled holes all the way along them and then used files to remove the extra material. I got tired of using the hacksaw and decided that it might be quicker and less labour intensive to just drill a series of holes all the way along the perimeter of the cut that I needed to make. That removes the bulk of the material and it's then very quick to join up all of the holes using a hacksaw. More holes are drilled vertically into the clamps which I'm going to put bolts through and then tighten up around the trucks later on. This is what the clamp looks like once I've finished cutting out and it's just going to work by this piece going on top of the other piece that is then clamping to the trucks. Then the motor is going to be mounted onto the larger piece at the back. However before I attach the mount and the motor I need to sort out the pulley which is going to be attaching onto the motor. This pulley on the internet said that it had a hole going through the middle but I think maybe they sent the wrong one because it doesn't but that's no problem because I can just sort that out by drilling an 8mm hole in my lathe. Then also drilled some 2mm holes in each side that I can then make for little set screws which is going to stop the pulley from rotating on the shaft. I tapped these holes for an M3 thread so that I can put an M3 threaded rod in. I then put everything in position and see if it's going to work and it looks like it's going to work nicely and this is just with all of the bolts completely loose. As you can see it won't tighten onto the trucks very well because the trucks are actually tapered so I draw a little mark on with a pen. I then use a metal file to flatten out that area and this is quite easy to do since it's soft aluminium. Once it's flattened out the clamp fits on properly and I can do it up really tight and it's not going to budge. I drilled two holes in the side of the clamp and continued them on into the trucks once I have it at the right angle. I then tapped these holes for an M5 thread and these are then going to make set screws which I can basically tighten up and this will stop the clamp from being able to rotate. Once these bolts are tightened up completely it prevents any rotation of the clamp whatsoever. I made sure that the clamp and the motor were at the right angle from the trucks so that there was enough ground clearance and also enough clearance from the board so that it doesn't rub when I turn. In total I made three little M3 grub screws which are going to go on the pulley and I tightened them all down as tight as possible against the shaft and this should stop it from rotating at all. Once all of the screws have been tightened down and I've tightened down all of the bolts so that the belt is properly tensioned that's pretty much the mechanical build finished. The next step is to do all of the electronics and it's all pretty simple but I'll be covering that in next week's tutorial. 
As I said earlier, the skateboard is still in version 1 and I've got a lot of upgrades that I can make and I can easily add more upgrades to the list if you guys have any good suggestions that you can leave in the comments. Also, this video is inspired by a really good tutorial done by Great Scott, and I'll link that down below. And he basically shows a more complicated way using a lot of custom made parts and custom made electronics on how to make an electric longboard. And that was basically the tutorial that made me think that this was possible and inspired me to make this build. So, thanks for watching. I really hope that you've enjoyed this video. And if you have, please hit the like button down below and subscribe. And if you want to see more regular updates on projects, follow me on Instagram. The link will be in the description down below. And if you want to help support my channel, and gain early access to any of these videos then you can consider supporting me on Patreon where you can get early access to all of these videos.